Angie. Nice to meet you guys. And uh, we just wanted to go through uh, our difficult airway car because I think a lot of times we don't really know what's actually in it. And we don't, if we don't know what's in it, we don't know when to actually bring it over to help us with uh, intubation. So we just wanted to go through and tell you what is actually in here, what equipment is in here, and what you can find. So come close and we'll kind of go through and, and see what we have over here. So at the top over here, you actually have some peep valves uh, that you should be using uh, on any sort of intubations in which uh, you're gonna attach it to a BVM when you have uh, fluid in the lungs or, or things along those lines. When you wanna get more peep. When you wanna get more peep, essentially, you have, uh, these are the, what the internal CO2 tubing actually connects to. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that as much. And we have meconium devices or meconium aspirators and Angie can kind of show you uh, briefly what the best way to use those. So this is a meconium device. So basically this is a really good way to get, um, if you want to get suction at the same time that you're having, passing an ET tube. So you're going to put this over and then you connect this to your suction cannula. And you go, you can add this, I'm sorry. Yeah, connect it to the suction and then with kind of putting pressure here, you control whether there's suction or not as you're passing the tube. So this is kind of an alternate um, as having like a suction with you so that way you don't lose your view and you don't, rem you can just do like a one pass and use suction at the same time. Yeah, it basically turns your ET tube into suction. a large bore suction device. So those are in here too. Um, we also have atomizers here. Um, which are right here. These are for your awake intubations uh, to really get that lidocaine nice, nicely in there. Those are in here too. Uh, then your Christmas trees, uh, of course, are in there um, just so you can attach all your tubing. And then in this row right here, we'll go through this row right here. We have a lot of a lot of things going on, but this is just some ET tube tape. In case um, you don't have the um, actual tape being that like RT will use. And now this over here are Bronk ET tube adapters. And Angie will kind of show that up to the camera and I'll kind of describe what this is. So this basically allows you to put a fiber optic scope through here while you're also bagging over here. So you have like an LMA and you put this on the LMA and then you can put a scope here and you can bag at the same time. Super useful for switching out an LMA for an ET tube using a fiber optic scope. While still bagging. While still bagging at the same time. We have your OPAs. Yep, nasal pharyngeal airways over here and oral pharyngeal airways over here. And then on this side of the cart, we have these, the ray tubes. These are essentially Parker Flex Tip Ray Tubes, R-A-E. Uh, those are the people who invented the tubes and the Parker tip is this sp special tip over here that allows you to get over the retinoids. But these are really good for fi nasal fiber optic intubations because they give you a lot of extra length. On obese patients, you may not be able to get normal ET tube to go all the way down. These can help you get that extra length and are right here on the sides. Um, and then we also have a oh, yes, emergency have a crack, kit. crack kit over here. On, uh, on this side, which is not the, not the scalpel finger bougie technique, but this is the kind of the Seldinger technique for your crack. Yes, and then next we're gonna show you just how to open this. Um, so it's gonna be tagged in, you kind of just pull it down. Oh, do a little boom. Yeah, a little. And then it's gonna be grabbed here, pull up to the side, and that way you can have it um, open. <laughs> um, you have your ET2, some scalpels, um, uh, we have your PD stylus. Yep, and over here some more nasal pharyngeal airways, Intel CO2 detectors. Mm -hmm. And this is actually a, this right. is some emergency, this is another way of doing a, a trach. It's like a needle over a catheter technique. You also yes. have over here these cool devices, oh, okay. uh, which a lot of people don't really know about, but these are called Monder Oral Screws. And, um, you actually take this screw just like this, and if someone has a jaw that is not able to open, you kind of put it in the jaw like this, and you can, as you screw, it helps you open a jaw that is that is very, very tight, maybe in a scleroderma patient or something where the jaw isn't moving. So these are the Monder Oral Airway Screws. And then we have these scissors right here. This is what they look like, and these you can use to cut like a jaw that's wired shut. You got some pretty sharp scissors, but it's, 
protected here so you don't actually hurt the patient. Yeah, so this can truly save a life if you have a lot of people have no idea this is in here, these jaw cutters, and they're gonna be better than, your trauma shears will not be able to cut um, those, those wires yeah. oftentimes in the jaw. Here we have a Prite kit. Um, this is a really good method to be able to, if you have um, a crack that you want to replace, um, you can use this to go ahead and like thread in a wire and then that way you don't lose that, that cannula that you already have in place. Yes, there's a lot of different methods of doing a crike as well as a trach, and you'll see multiple methods over here. So that's one. Then you also have a, a percutaneous trach kit. So if surgery or somebody needs to do a trach at the bedside, there's a trach yeah, kit here. And you'll see there's another one too, another different kit as well. And then we go down over PD. here, we have some PD LMAs that we probably don't really see that often. And over then here, the, um, more meconium aspirators. These are the syringes for the LMAs. That's what these are here for. Um, on this side over here, and you want to show this? Yeah, so this right here is a small uh, uh, suction tray. This is something that you can use for a trach. You will never know what's going on with that. Um, yeah, so this is a good way to first kind of diagnose if there's some uh, secretion or something. So you take out that uh, cannula the inner and cannula. then so right here and then this you're going to connect to the suction tubing um, and this is a sterile procedure because you're actually entering the lungs um, but you're going to be able to go in just with this as you're connected and just go feed all the way down um, try to get anything that may be blocking the airway it's also a good way to to uh, evaluate if it's dislodged if you cannot like pass it all the way through then you know that it's probably not in the right place perfect love it and then one other thing that's in here is actually a pediatric jet ventilation kit and there's actually a nice little photo here um, that shows you the actual setup here are all the pieces in here there's a bvm and there's the top of the et tube there's a syringe and a catheter uh, all of that to do with pediatric jet ventilation when it's all put together this is actually what it should look like um, over here so if you need to do that uh, for peds, that equipment is also here. Hopefully we won't have to do that. Um, and going down over here, we have another type of cryo catheter set. You'll see there are multiple different sets. And on this side are two different airway exchange catheters. Are you gonna hold this one? So one is a blue one and one is a yellow one. This is the Cook Airway Exchange Catheter. This is a small catheter to help you exchange an ET tube out. Uh, let's say a balloon breaks on one of them and, you, and it's already intubated. So you can use this to exchange one tube for another. And then this is your entry catheter, uh, which we use a lot for fiber optic okay. intubations. You should be able to practice using this in your advanced airway labs. These basically are a larger version of the Cook catheters because they fit on a fiber optic scope and are perfect for switching out an LMA for an ET tube using a fiber optic scope. And um, that, that's what this is meant for. And then almost done, down over here. a few different types of trachs so this is yep so these one. are extra large trachs they have the xl on them there are a couple different yes. types of extra large trachs that are in here um okay. and you'll see they're all still in packages but extra extra large ones for different types of patients that you may need to switch it out for and then you have all various different sizes in here also of other trachs uh, and you can see their sizes kind of on the outside. They're all over here. And this is another... And you want to look at the first is it number. Really, the yep. color is what makes it easier to Exactly. Identify. What Angie's saying is six. This is a size six. The first number four is a size four. This is a size eight. Or you can go by the color green, blue, purple to get the right size that you need for the new trachs. And the lastly, we have uh, another tracheostomy, bedside tracheostomy kit. Uh, in there as well and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it hope you guys learned something next time you're on shift come over here take a look at it 
and start to familiarize, familiarize yourself with it and uh, hopefully we can all learn to use all our airway tools as best as we can. Thanks so much.